Prism is a web-based tool designed to support collaborative, crowdsourced interpretations of text and provide a visualisation of that interpretation. Users upload a text to Prism. They then provide some categories or parameters within which to interpret the text. They then invite participants to do that interpretation of the text and then the PRISM tool then aggregates those interpretations. So it allows users to analyse trends in how groups of readers evaluate or interpret text uh, and, and or make meaning from text. PRISM would be useful for academics, historians or other humanist researchers that need to analyse or critically evaluate the texts and responses to texts. Also for educators as a basis of discussion for literature with students and to provide a framework for students to actually critically analyse texts. So let's have a look at how PRISM works. When you get to the PRISM web page, it's a very simple, clean interface. But first of all, what you do need to do is sign in. When you sign in, you do have the options to sign in with your social media accounts, Facebook or Google, or you can set up an email uh, account. So that makes it quite um, easy for most people. So I'm just going to sign in with my Google account. Once you've signed in, you still have the same options that you saw initially. You've got a demo mode, so you can actually have a look at how PRISM works and there's a tutorial. You've also you've got your create mode, so this is where you actually create your prisms and upload text that you want interpreted. And then you've also got a play mode. So uh, you can license your prisms and you can make your prisms available to the public and or you can make them unlisted as well. So you can play with other prisms. Um, so let's just have a look first at um, creating a prism. So if you want to create a prism, you just need to copy and paste text into this box and then you provide the category, categories upon which you want that text to be interpreted. You give it a title, um, who the author was, the publication date of it, then a little bit of a description about how you want that uh, text interpreted or what those categories mean, whether you want it to be unlisted, that is only the people that you send the link to will have it, and you license it and then you create your prism. If we just go back so to the prisms that I have already created to have a look at, so if we look at the one here, Man from Snowy River, I've created that, so I uploaded the Man from Snowy River, which is an Australian poem, and I have options here. I can give this link, the highlighting link to participants, to actually go in and interpret, or I can look at this link and actually see the interpretation, the crowdsourced interpretation. So let's just have a look at how the highlighting works. So with this particular poem, I decided that I wanted people to interpret it by three different themes that I felt were important in the poem based on some information that I had. So participants can then go through the text and they can pick one of these themes. So I might say it's, um, I'm going to look at anything that's action and I might go, okay, writers, that's an action theme. Um, or I might say, okay, uh, Bushman is an Australian identity. So I'm going to highlight Bushman as Australian identity. Or it might be that I think um, the Snowy River is bush outback imagery. Or wild bush horses is bush outback imagery. So I highlight that. I save my highlights. Have some instructions here too if I do need them I save my highlights and once that's saved then it goes into the crowdsourced interpretation so just go back and we can have a look at the crowdsourced interpretation that I got from this text 
So here's the crowdsource interpretation from the text. Now let's just go to the bottom to see. It tells me how many users contributed to this visualization, so that's important information. And it actually gives you a facet visualization. So if I click on words here, I can see, so if I click on Bushman, I can see here now that 66.7% people thought that was an Australian identity theme and 33.3% thought that was a bush outback imagery theme. I can also click on font size visualization so that I can see the larger the font size the more users have highlighted that word with the relevant category. So this is giving me some information around what how or how people interpret this text and this could be really important for any sort of research I'm doing it could be a really good basis for discussion around analyzing literature in a classroom as well